amen and sick and sick and All right. You've got a deal. If you'll, preach, if you'll amen hard, I'll preach hard and we'll roll and go. But um, I want to say this, that a church should never be turned into a casual circus. And uh, this is the most important time of your week, every week, uh, apart from your family time and devotion. And the message God's given me today is a serious message, and I hope that you'll take it to heart. I want to say, first of all, today, that uh, if you're here today and you're lost, you've never been saved. It's our desire and our goal and our purpose is to see you saved. Uh, we're not here to play games with your soul. We're not here to kind of wiggle around a mulberry bush and, uh, and, and allude to something. Uh, we'll tell you flat out that you must be born again. John Wesley was asked by people, how come you preach that you must be born again all the time? He said, because you must be born again. If you're not born again, you'll not go to heaven. And if you don't go to heaven, you're going to go to a devil's hell. And when you go there, that's it for eternity and then the lake of fire. So I'm telling you this morning, this is serious business. This is more important than anything you've done this week. I ask those of you who are saved to be praying, but I'm going to be preaching primarily to save people today but also, of course, to the lost. And I want to say to you this, that if you're here today and you're lost, you can get saved right where you're sitting while I'm preaching. And if that don't suit you, find a place up here somewhere, come up here and find a place. If that don't suit you, go out by your car or out by a tree, but find some place to get on your face and before God and ask God to save you. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All that come to him he will in no wise cast out. And there's no reason you can't be saved other than the fact that your pride might keep you from humbling yourself before a mighty God and agreeing and surrendering to the Lord that you're a sinner, helpless to save yourself, and need of His Son, the Lord Jesus. By the way, let me say, you are not saved by imitating the life of Christ. You can't imitate His life. You're saved by His death, burial, and resurrection, by His sacrifice and substitutionary death in your place, by His shed blood. Dying for you in your place. You can't ever burn in hell long enough to satisfy God. Did you know that? That's why hell's forever. You're not going there to pay for your sins. You can't pay for them. You're going there because you have rejected God. And there's no other place for you in eternity except away from the Lord. And God is a holy and a just God. Proverbs chapter 27, verse number 8 today. The Bible says this. Please pray for me while I preach. I want the power of God. As a bird... That wandereth from her nest. And here's the message. So is a man that wandereth from his place. As a bird that wandereth from her nest. Does anybody know what happens to kids or what happens to the chicks when the bird wanders from her nest? There's a message there both for mothers and for fathers. God says if you tinker around and wander away from your nest, you're going to leave that nest susceptible. I've seen black snakes in birds' nests before. I think any snake's a picture of the devil. Amen? And the Bible said here that a man that wanders from his place, he said he's the same way. He said a man that wanders from his place. I want to preach today on the subject, daddies that are drifting. Drifting daddies today. Drifting daddies. Lord, help us to preach today. Fill us with your spirit, your power. God, I pray that you'll forgive me and cleanse me and wash me and preach through me in spite of me. God, to the hearts and the spirits of these people today. Lord, I don't want to preach at their mind. I want to preach at their spirit. Because the spirit's what, where the real work is done. And so I pray, Holy Ghost of God, come down upon this place today and arrest the attention of these people that you have a message for them. And I pray, God, today right now against the powers of hell. I pray against them right now, Lord, in the name and the blood of the Lamb of God that you would hinder the devil from lying to people, from puffing people up with pride and rebellion and stubbornness. And God, that you'd put a spirit of humility and surrender upon this service. And I pray, God, today that you'll help us to be warned from the Word of God of the danger of drifting. Lord, not just daddies, but mothers and children and grandchildren. Lord, all of us, God, I pray today, help us magnify your holy name through this message today, God. And give us grace, Lord, to be faithful in Jesus' name. Amen. Drifting means basically this. If a man is drifting, he's unconsciously, it's an unconscious, but also a slight or slow movement. Listen to me now. 
a slight or slow movement away from something to something. It's so slow and done in such small degrees that drifting is not usually noticed by the casual observant. It is an aimless wandering, and it is being slowly moved away by unseen forces. And if you'll think about drifting snow, you cannot see the force that's causing that snow to drift. It is not a powerless movement because there is an unseen power moving the person or the object that's being drifted. If it's being drifted in the water, it's a current that's moving it. There is some kind of power unseen by casual observance that's moving a person. In the life of the saved person, let us assume today, saints of God, there is always the danger of you wandering or drifting away from God as a saved person. Part of my responsibility as a pastor of this church is to, first of all, see to it that I don't drift. But I have drifted in times. And I'm telling you, it takes power to come back from drifting. And there's always the opportunity, there's always a subjection of wandering or drifting away from the Lord. The Bible teaches us that if you know anything about keeping sheep, they have a tendency to wander. They have a tendency to drift away. And without a shepherd, sheep will wander. They will drift away. There's an old song in the faith, Lord, prone to wander. Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. That is a truth in Christianity. If you're here today and you're saved, I don't care how long you've been saved, you have within your flesh a tendency to wander away from God. There's a subtle unseen power that can just pull you away. Little by little, you're drifting. You don't know how you got where you're at. There's a constant battle within a Christian against the flesh to keep us from drifting. Can I say today that a man does not serve God by accident? No man serves God by accident. You'll serve God as a, as a Christian by commitment, by purpose, by consecration, by devotion, by diligence, by discipline in your life. You will only grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ as you discipline yourself, as you commit yourself. You'll never serve God consistently and faithfully by accident. It just won't happen. In fact, you'll do just the opposite. Rather, if you don't have the devotion and the discipline and the dedication, you will drift. If there's not a power working within you nonstop, you will drift away from God, not to God. Drifting also affects all ages of people. It will take more than a hard-preaching Bible preacher to keep you from drifting. Do you know that? Now, let me say off the set today, there are people under the sound of my voice in this church, and I know we'll be in CD, that are drifting. There are some of you today that are drifting away from God. You've been drifting for some time, and it's been so slow, you haven't even noticed it yourself. It will take more than a preacher who gets up and hollers at you every Sunday to get, keep you from drifting. Did you know that Jesus Christ was the most magnificent and the greatest preacher that ever set foot upon this earth? Besides being our Savior, and yet the twelve disciples that He walked with Him drifted. Did you know if you'll study those disciples that they drifted? I say to you this morning that if the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ can drift in the presence of the Savior, you and I better be watching out because it's far more possible for you and I to be drifting from the Lord. It will take more than being raised in a godly home to keep you from drifting. A godly home is a wonderful thing. It's indispensable. But I'm telling you something. You can be raised in a godly home and still drift away from God. You can be raised in a great church under great preaching and still drift away from God. I want to ask you a question this morning. I want you to answer it in your heart and in your mind. I want you to get honest with God. I am praying for God to send a revival to this church. I want God to send it. I don't have it, I never have had it, and I never will have it. But I want God to do it. And when God moves in, we won't have to ask who got here. I know this much that God, and I don't know all that God wants to do and how He's going to do it, but I'm saying this to you. I know that God wants to do some special things with some people in this church. I believe that with all my heart. I do not believe God brought this congregation just to come here and soak and enjoy it every Sunday. 
I'm thankful for what we're doing. And I'm thankful for all that God is doing through this church. But I'm telling you something. This nation needs preachers. This nation needs dedicated people who are not just drifting through their spiritual life, but who have the power of God going against the stream of this world. I'm saying this. I want to ask you a question. Be honest in your heart. Answer it to yourself and to God. Are you drifting spiritually? Have you drifted away from God? Have you drifted away from that which you know is right and holy and good and wholesome and where God would have you to be? Are you where are you at the place you once were with God? Or have you drifted away from the Lord Jesus Christ? Is Christ some kind of distant Savior to you today? Or is He the love of your heart today? Have you drifted away from your Bible? Are you really reading your Bible? Or is it just maybe a habit that you think of once in a while? Have you drifted away from the prayer closet? Have you drifted away from godliness? Have you drifted away from love? Have you drifted away from honesty? There's a story of two friends that went to high school together. After they'd been out several years and passed by, one of them called the other up and he said, I'm coming through your part of the country. And he said, I'd like to stop by and see an old man. He said, yeah, he said, you be sure and stop through. And he said, well, I'm coming through. He told him when he's going to come through. And he said, listen, he said, I just bought me a boat. He said, and, and I, we're not that far from the ocean. He said, when you get here, he said, I want to take you out and show you my boat. Man, he said, it's a blast. So they got up there. He come through at the appointed time, and he said, "I can't be here very long." But he said, "Hey, said, listen, let's go." He said, "Went out there and they hooked up this boat, and they took off out to the ocean. He pulled it back there, dock, unloaded it, and they took off." This guy, he was proud of this boat. He was, and really, it was a real big point of pride to him that he went to high school with this guy and was buddies with him, and it was a point of pride that he had this boat and that he could go out on the ocean and and enjoy himself. They went out there and they began to visit. And uh, they had fished some. They weren't having too much luck fishing, kind of like me when I go fishing. But they were out there. And first thing you know, they begin to drift. And they were visiting, catching up on a long time. They just really having themselves a good time. And they played with little cards. And they told some jokes. And they told stories. And, and really kind of pumping, you know, bragging on it. You know, just kind of working themselves up, trying to catch up on lost time. And as they drifted out there... Things got, time got away from them. And the first thing you know, they were farther out on the ocean than they realized. And, uh, it was a funny thing that happened. They saw this boat coming to them. And lo and behold, it was the Coast Guard. And the Coast Guard boat pulled up pretty close. And the guy got in the bullhorn and he said, listen guys, he said, you're way too far out for the size of the boat you're in. And there's a storm coming. And he said, you guys need to get back. And if you need help, let us know. We'll help you get you. Follow us. And this guy got ticked off. And he's like, you know, who do you think you are, Barney Fife? You know, all this kind of stuff, you know. And who do you think you are? To, that's, he didn't tell the Coast Guard that. But when they pulled away, he smarted off to his friend that had come with him on the boat. And he said, these guys run around. They think they rule the world and all this kind of stuff. And he had this attitude. And uh, he just really had a stinking attitude about the Coast Guard warning him. Well, of course, you know what happened. After a while, they started back up, they started the boat up, and he got up there a little ways, and that tank ran out. And he was going to switch the tanks, and the other tank is empty, and he didn't know it. And there they were out there in this boat in the ocean, the storm coming. And they drifted farther than they ever thought that, you know, that they dreamed that they would. And of course, the storm hit them. And it was a sad story, because six days later, a search and rescue team found this boat. And in this boat, they were still in it. But the man who owned the boat was dead. And his body was bloated up from the heat and the, and the tropical temperatures bloated up nearly to a bursting bloat. And the other man was still alive, his, his buddy, but he was barely alive. And they had to get him to a hospital and a lot of long treatment to get him back. Several months later, a journalist, a young journalist from college, decided that they were looking for a story to do. And he went to visit this man that survived this ordeal. And I believe it's a perfect picture of this spiritual drifting, that conversation that he had with this man. First of all, he asked him, he said, could you give me the reason? He said, so why, why, why did you drift? He said, how is it that you guys drifted out so far and got into such trouble? I want you to listen to this man's answer. It's astounding, the spiritual analogies that are here. This was his first answer, the reason that they drifted. He said, the current, listen to me, the current pulled us so slow, we really didn't realize how far that we had drifted. Did you know the devil doesn't care if it takes him two years, three years, five years, seven years to get you away from God? Did you know he'll just gradually work on you year after year? I have watched, I've been filling this pulpit for 29 years nearly. And I want to tell you something I have noticed in people's, and this, as a, I'm not a good pastor, I'm really not. 
But I've noticed, I, there's one thing I can see. I can see people drifting. I can almost tell you two to three years ahead of time now, who will not be in church here five years from now? By the attitude, by the spiritual drifting that's going on in their soul. There are certain, there are certain signs that you can see in the drifting person. What I'm saying, and I'm not worried about you going to church here. What I'm worried about you is where you're drifting away from the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not worried about this church. I'm worried about your spiritual drifting away from God is what I'm talking about. I'm saying this, the spiritual drifting is usually very slow. It doesn't just happen one Sunday. It doesn't just happen one month. Spiritual drifting is gradually, it's a little bit at a time. And I'm saying this, you cannot notice it usually by casual observation. It's a slow process. The devil doesn't care how long it takes to get you away, but if he can get you to where you're drifting, I mean, this year you're a little bit less spiritual act minded than you were last year. And you're not quite as concerned about being obedient to God as you used to be. By the way, can I say to you, there's a word current there that's very powerful. Many people are led away from God by current trends, current fads, current fashions, current philosophies, current theology, current Bibles, and the current is what's pulling them away. There are churches 80 years ago who were preaching out of the King James Bible. They didn't believe in women preachers. They believed people ought to dress right. They believed in salvation by the new birth. And now they don't believe nothing. They drifted to where they stand for nothing. Whole denominations have drifted in the last 50 years to where they're absolutely powerless and, and absolutely worthless to our nation. Let me say something to you. You can drift. Genesis chapter 13. And I will tell you where you can find right here where drifting gets its basis from. Drifting comes from a rebellious heart. Genesis 13, and the number 13 is the number of rebellion in the Bible, is the story of a man by the name of Lot. And the Bible said in Genesis 13 that Lot pitched his tent toward Sodom. He pitched it toward it. And at that point in his life, Lot began drifting when he pitched his tent toward Sodom. This pattern is seen in homes and families across our nation. And I, I want to say this, that if somebody had went down the lot that day, he pitched the first time he ever pitched his tent toward Sodom. If you'd have went down there and, pulled, and went up there and knocked on the tent post and said, Hey, Lot, I want to talk to you for a minute. And said, Hey, Lot, I want to give you something going on here. You're starting to drift. Can I tell you, Lot, that you're going to drift so bad someday that you get to the point of where you call Sodomites brethren. You will drift that far. Did you know that churches are drifting so far in this country that they call sodomites brethren? You talk about sick. That's what will happen to you when you drift. Hey, Lot, you're going to drift so far, buddy, that you're going to start calling sodomites brethren. Hey, Lot, can I tell you that if you keep drifting, you're going to drift to you sitting in the gates of that city with them in fellowship with them every day of your life. It's going to become part of who your whole family is. Can I say to you further, hey, Lot, you're going to drift to leave to a point of where you'll offer your virgin daughters to a pack of perverts outside your house one night. That's what drifting will do to you, and that's where drifting spiritually will take you. Some of you teenagers think you can drift to get by with it. No, you can't. That drifting is going to take you a lot farther than you'll ever dream about going. Young Lot never dreamed that there would come a day as a father drifting daddies that he would offer his own daughters to a pack of perverts outside his house. How mess can you get? But that's what drifting will do to you. you at what? You're going to drift, listen to me, until your own children and family will mock your Christian testimony. When, mock, when Lot warned them to get out of Sodom, they he said, It seemed as one that mocked unto them. What? You're going to drift until angels have to drag you out of this town. Until angels of God have to pull you out of this slop hole, this hell hole that you're in. Lot, you're going to drift until your wife is so in love with the world that she'll turn back and turn into a pillar of salt. Lot, you're going to drift so bad that you will get drunk by your own daughters, commit incest with your own daughters, and bear bastard grandchildren from your own, your own daughters who will someday, Lot, you're going to drift so far that your grandchildren are going to be nations that will be the perpetual enemies of God's people forever. So that's drifting. That's where drifting will take you. You can think, well, you know, I'm just floating along. 
I, I don't need to be faithful in church, and I don't need to read my Bible, and I don't need to pray, and I don't need to watch myself, and I don't need the power of the Holy Ghost in me to keep me from drifting. Buddy, you're fooled already. You're in bad shape right now. I want to tell you something. The truth about it is, this morning, I'm asking you, are you drifting? I wonder, would Lot have believed that if somebody went down and told him that first day he pitched his tent towards Sodom? Lot, this is where your drifting is going to take you. Can I tell you some of you daddies something this morning? If you don't get up off your lazy backside and start praying with your children, start taking your family faithful to church, get serious with God, you're going to lose your grandchildren. You're going to drift until your grandchildren think that it has mass church is nothing. It's, it, it, it's worthless. It's going to happen to you. Now, let me tell you something. I like you and I hope you like me. But you know what? I love you enough to tell you the truth. That's what people ain't getting in America nowadays. Listen to me this morning. I'm telling you, listen, don't drift. Don't drift. You've got to have power to stop. And you, and if you don't have power in you by the Holy Ghost of the Word of God, you will drift. You can't stop yourself. You've got to have God to stop drifting. Second thing, he said, no, the current pulled us. But he said this, listen to it. We were more interested in fun and pleasure than the direction we were headed. I mean, this is a guy that just is telling this journalist. We were more interested in our fun and our pleasure than the direction we were headed. Can I tell you something? When you get focused as a father on more on fun and pleasure and having a good time than you are raising your children spiritually and walking with God, you're in the headed in the wrong direction. When you're more interested in football, basketball, baseball, golf, golf ball, and every other kind of ball than you are the Bible, you are drifting. I want to tell you something. If you take your child to a t-ball game on Wednesday night, you just get ready for hell, fire, and brimstone. For your great grandkids. Uh, say amen right there. That's exactly right. Let me tell you something. We better get off this generational train wreck headed to hell of letting our kids be think that oh, life's about having fun and life's about having pleasure. Life is about being saved and going to heaven and not going to hell. That's what life's really about. Amen. I'm trying to preach hard enough to make some of you mad. You're more interested in playing than praying. We're more interested in scoring than soul winning. I wonder where the daddy is that would be thrilled with his child leading another person to Christ as he is a three-pointer. We're mixed up and we're drifting away. Thirdly, he said we had a power shortage. He said our fuel supply was not sufficient. Listen to what he said. If we had been more sensitive to the wind... We would never have allowed ourselves to get so far away. Did you hear what that man said? He said, if we'd been more sensitive to the wind, the wind's a picture of the Holy Ghost of God. And I can tell you this, that when a man's drifting, the Holy Ghost of God is going to send him warnings. He's going to, he's going to touch it. Donnie said, this son's going to go. When I sin, the Holy Ghost gets a hold of me. The Holy Ghost speaks to me. Hey, if you're saved, the Holy Ghost, of, the wind of God will speak to you about where you're headed to. Thirdly, he said this here. He said that that's, that's the reason for it. He said, secondly, he said the results of our drifting. He said, what, what, what happened as a result of your drifting? Listen to this. He said, number one, we became dehydrated. This ought to be one of the greatest points to let you know whether you're drifting here today or not. He said, we dried up. Let me tell you, when you're, when you're, when you're drifting... When you're so dehydrated, when's the last time you wept over somebody dying and going to hell? When's the last time you wept and had that water of life so flowing through your soul that you were excited about seeing people saved? I'm asking you this morning, you're drifting. You know why America's dying and going to hell as a nation? Because we're drifting. We're drifting. I, I, I'm not trying to be down. Not try, listen, let me tell you something. Judgment has to begin at the house of God. It has to. And if we won't judge ourselves and let God pull us back from our drifting, there is no hope for this nation. I'm going to tell you something. Your favorite candidate is not going to pull this nation out of the hellhole mess it's into. It's going to be Christian people getting right with God and serving the Lord. That's what's going to bring this nation out. He said we got dehydrated. Spiritually drifting, this book is called The Water of Life. When you're drifting, you're not getting the water of life in. You're, you're, you're watching Oprah and all your, all your little stink and slop hole and nasty hellhole shows. You're looking at Facebook. I'm going to tell you something now. The Internet may be a wonderful machine, but I'm going to tell you it has become the hellhole of America. 
And I'm going to tell you something. You'd be a lot better off reading your Bible than getting on Facebook 24 hours a day. Your little social network. Your little texting. Why don't you text God? Why don't you text God? I am sick. I am sick of this socialite country who wants to feed on filth and trash non-stop at each other. Facebook, sex testing, all this garbage out of hell. I want to ask you something. Why don't you text God? Why don't you get in God's Word? You know what? That's why you're dried up. That's why you have no spiritual aptitude. That's why you don't care whether anybody's dying or going to hell. In fact, the truth of it is, this church, if this church dried up and went to hell, it wouldn't make any difference to you. you just go off and suck on another cow somewhere. Are you listening to me? I'm talking about spiritual parasiticalness. I'm talking about sucking the blood out of somebody else's spiritual life. Takers. This nation has become a nation of takers, not givers. Brother, I'm going to tell you something. July 2nd, it's hot. I know it's hot. I'm older and I'm tighter. But I'm going to go out there the night of July 2nd and bless God. I'm going to give it my best if I can. I'm going to pray and we're going to give our heart. We're going to give Jesus Christ to those people. But we have to be people who are not takers, but givers. Somebody's got to give it in this country. What this nation is built on. He said we became dehydrated. We've got dehydrated homes. They're dry as spiritually as they can be. There's no praying going on. There's no Bible reading going on. Dehydrated parents. Dehydrated children. Dehydrated pastors. Dehydrated congregations. And thus a dry country. Here's the second thing. This is like to blew me away. He said we not only became dehydrated, but he said as we got dehydrated, we became delirious. We lost our minds. One of them drunk his own urine. You've ever said anybody got out in the ocean, got dehydrated, in the sun too long? They get delirious. Can I tell you something? When you start drifting, you get delirious. Can I tell you? I've watched this. I have watched this. Boy, and I've seen I said, Lord, that is it. It is exactly. Have you ever wondered what makes people so stupid that ought to know better? Did you ever wonder why people can take light and turn it clear upside down and then go forward acting like to everybody around them, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right, and put on the phony baloney spiritual deal that everything's lovely when it's not? Amen. You are delirious by drifting. You're dehydrated. You do not have the Word of God in you, and you are delirious. You think right's wrong, wrong's right. Your mind's backward, and you're a reprobate. Amen. Amen. Exactly. We've toyed ourselves around thinking that if we do this, let me tell you something. Just because we go out here and feed two or three thousand people doesn't make us spiritual. I'm going to tell you something. You know, I need, can I tell you something when you're drifting? When you're more worried about your little personal hurts and concerns and somebody didn't speak to you right, somebody didn't shake your hand, and you know, and blah, blah, blah. Why don't you go over in the corner and puke? Why don't you go out there in the back of some car puke? Because you're sick. Amen. I love this church. Best church in the country. I won't keep it that way. That's why I'm preaching like a preacher. If this preacher runs you off, God's got you a car out there. Amen. I'm trying to help you. Let me tell you something. Some preacher that never preaches on your need and preaches on the realities of spiritual warfare isn't worth a flip nickel to you and your family. He's letting you drift to hell. Land of living. If I, if I spent my life worrying about the little nitpicking things that goes on in my life all the time, I wouldn't even have a message ready for this time six months from now. They became delirious. Their mind got messed up. Right became wrong. Wrong became right. They became reprobate. You can't comprehend the truth. Couldn't stand up. He said we got to where we couldn't even stand up. When people are drifting, they will not stand up for the truth. They can't. They have no power in them. They became dehydrated. Became delirious. Let me tell you something. Daddies can become delirious. They come, the daddies become delirious when they get dehydrated. They get dehydrated because they've been drifting. And I'm telling you, you get delirious when you won't straighten things out in your home. You know what some of your kids need? A good whooping. Some of you think your kids are so spiritual they don't need whoopings. You are delirious. You're delirious. You think your children do not have a sin nature? I'm going to tell you something. Listen to me. I'll, I'll tell you right now. I love my daughters, but I'll tell you right now, my daughters is not wearing a bunch of slop clothes. I'll kick their backside halfway down the driveway. You watch me do it. 
not live under my roof. They're not wearing a bunch of slop clothes. My daughters are not looking like them sluts out there in Hollywood. You listen to me. You're delirious. You said, what can I do? Hey, quit putting up with it. Stop it. Mm. We're delirious. We think that they can just keep drifting that way and drifting that way. It's all going to be fine. What are we thinking? We turned it upside down. We're letting them watch programming they ought not be watching. We're letting them look at Internet stuff they ought not be looking at. We're letting them communicate with people they should never be communicating with. I want to tell you, some of your kids need, need, need brand new friends. You know who those brand new friends need to be? Their mom and daddy. I don't this to me this morning. This Father's Day, I wrote my dad a letter, and I still thank him. I believe with all my heart I'd be in hell waiting for that man right there. I can tell you one thing. He whipped the living daylight out of me and told me, he said, you're not going to go back to school and run with them boys no more. I'll tell you something. I'll whip you all, all over the place. He did it, too. Let me tell you, you can change the direction of your children. You can put some power in the backside that will come out their head. You can change the direction of your drifting children. And I'm telling some of you parents right here, you're going to cry and squall your eyeballs out. Some of you are going to walk behind the bar and you're going to walk behind the house. And you're going to weep your heart out because you let your children drift. Hey, if my children drift, it's going to be because, no, it's not going to be because I didn't say something. I'm not just watching them drift off the end of this thing. I'm talking about becoming delirious. How in the world can we think our children turn out right and let them drift on through public education and let God be called a liar all their life? I know you say, oh, well, my kids, I'll teach them better now, yeah. I'm going to tell you, you'll find out in life what will happen. That stuff's slow, but it's effective. It isn't deteriorating. It'll wash, it'll wash out the spiritual foundation that you're trying to put in their lives. He said, number three, the results of it is death. One of them died. One of them didn't make it back. Are you listening to me? When you're drifting, you don't always make it back. The prodigal son. Everybody wants to talk about the prodigal son. Come home. Bless God he did. I'm glad for the prodigal son he came home. He didn't. He came home and he was never the same boy he was when he left. He had scars on him that he never got rid of the rest of his life. And may I say to you, there's a lot more stories in the Bible than the prodigal son. And a lot of them never, somebody said, Elimelech, he never come home. He prodigal went out of, he went, went, went off into Moab. He never did come back. Samson. Never did come back. There are more people in the Bible who did not come back as the prodigal son than who did get back. You don't always make it back, friend. You don't always make it back. Now, I've had young people tell me they hated my guts, told me to my face that I've preached in this church and preached to them for years. And they sat there for years and years and years and, and hated me. Hated me. But I'd rather have your hatred than to have you look at me at judgment day and say, why didn't you tell the truth? You let me drift. You didn't say a word against it. And you as my preacher. David drifted. Yeah, he got back. Read David's life after that. <laughs> didn't amount to anything. Trouble all the time. Nothing but trouble. Because he drifted. Solomon drifted. The nation went down. Well, he said this, and this is the good part. He said, well, you've given me the reason for your drifting, and you've given me the results of your drifting. But he said, what would you tell other people the remedy for drifting is? I want you to listen to this, and I'll let you go home. He said, number one, kids, please listen to me. Daddies, listen to me. He said, never be controlled or driven by the current. Never allow yourself to be controlled by the current, or you will drift. I want to tell you something. I don't want myself controlled by the current way of life that America is living. I don't want to be controlled by the beliefs of even the average church in America. I don't want to be driven by the current. By the way, you see, here's the thing. I want you to understand this. Now, young people, you listen to me. When you're drifting, there's a power working in your life. You are not running your life. There's a power underneath your life that's running you. It's not that you just kind of let go and you're just kind of, Doing nothing. You're under the power of another power now through the power of Jesus Christ. And I'm saying this to you. Don't you let. I don't tell you what you can do. You can ask my daughter sitting right there. I stood and I, I looked her. She gave me a Father's Day card this morning and I appreciated it. It made me weep. 
I said, Susanna, you're 12 years old. I said, you're getting ready to hit a stage in your life that you ain't never seen nothing like. And I said, I want to tell you something. You stand alone. And I don't care if it has to be right there in that church. And I pray for her, and I pray for all of you kids. Let me tell you something. You be careful about the kids you're hanging around. You be careful about the current that's pulling your life. You be careful about the music that you're listening to with some friends you're with. Don't let the current pull you. That man said, listen, if I would give anybody one advice, he said, do not allow the current to run your life. It's so sad preachers even let the current run their life. Secondly, he said, realize that you're drifting. And you're drifting because you're being driven. Thirdly, he said this, don't run with friends who are drifting. Don't run around with friends that are drifting. He said, I got in a boat with an old friend. And he said, we both drifted together. Amnon had a friend. And Amnon's friend got his friend to drifting. And he was drifting toward death. He said, don't run around with friends who are drifting. He said, Reggie, how do I keep from it? You just quit it. He said, I... Not going with you. I'll tell you, don't wait till they do something stupid. If you sense the attitude in them that ain't right, yeah. just say, I'm not going with you today. Don't let them drift you. He said this keep the lighthouse in view all, at all times. He said, keep the lighthouse in view at all times. Jesus is our lighthouse. Don't let anybody take you where you can't see Christ. He said this. He said, keep extra fuel, water, and food at all times. On hand, in case of a storm. Hmm. He said, but what if you don't need it? He said, you got it if you do. You said, Raven, Red, I didn't see in the Bible where it says, thou shalt go to church on Wednesday night. I know that, but I'm stocking up for the storm on Wednesday nights. Amen. I know the Bible doesn't say thou shalt get to Sunday school and be in Bible class. And by the way, can I say something to you? If you wandered, drifted in here this morning, in time for my preaching, you've already missed the best of it. That Sunday school class. You've done missed the best. You've done missed. You say, Reggie, why do you get here at 940? Why do you get here at 944? Because I want to get stocked up for the storms ahead of my life. I'm going to be in some storms. And I want to get stocked up. I don't I needed that worse than you needed. You just don't know. I need to be challenged. I need to be fed. I need to be strengthened. I need the food. I need the fuel. I need the water so I can be stocked up for the storms. I don't read my Bible during the week because I'm just stocking up for the storms. You say, well, I don't need Bible class on Sunday morning. I don't need Sunday night. And I don't need... Pray for the rest of us, would you, spiritual? You're so spiritual you don't need all that. Man, you must be something. I mean, you really must be spiritual. You're all stocked up, Amen. You being mean is well, no, I ain't mean, mean I love you, amen. I'm trying to keep you and your family from drifting. Amen. Can I say something to you that if you don't come to Bible class, it's almost a hundred and ten percent surety that your children will not come to Bible class. And if you don't come to Wednesday night prayer, I can almost bet you a thousand bucks. Lay it on the table that your children will never go to church on Wednesday night and never get on their knees. Oh, and I know you think Wednesday night's boring. Because you think prayer is boring. You think talking to the God of glory is boring? What would you say if your wife said that to you? She really don't want to talk to you. You're boring. I'm going to tell you something. The older I get, the more I love it. You see, I'm getting a little closer to home all the time. 
And I'll tell you, there's something happening in my soul and happening in my spirit. I mean, I want to, I want to stay on this side as long as God let me, but I'm going to tell you something. I am ready for the trumpet sound. I'm ready. I'm just saying this to you. He said, keep the lighthouse on and keep extra food and water on board just in case of the storm. How many has had a storm the last two or three years hit you? Well, you're going to be some stocking up. Amen. And then he said this, don't think it can't happen to you. Because I would never drift. You will. If you don't keep some power in your life. And he said this, this is amazing. He said, never judge how far you drifted by the other boats around you. Whew. Never judge how far you drifted by the other boats around you. Well, Lord, I'm living, I think I'm living just as good as Brother Ralph is. Ralph's not my comparison. Some of you say, well, Lord, I'm there three quarters of the time Reggie is, and he's the preacher. Reggie can drift. Reggie has drifted. And the last thing he told him, I loved. He said, whatever you do. <laughs> Y'all ready for this, ain't you? He said, whatever you do, never, never get mad at the Coast Guard when they come and tell you get in. He said, the stupidest, stupidest thing we did was get mad at the Coast Guard for telling us to get back. There's a storm coming. You know what we'll do? God will deal with us, and we'll puff up against God. Oh, some of you is even thinking this morning, I don't even know why I came here. It was Father's Day or I wouldn't have. And the Lord sent old Reggie the Coast Guard. Hey, you're drifting! You're about to puff it up. Who's he think he is anyway? Barney Fife. One bullet, Barney. Telling me I'm drifting. Warning me I better watch out. Warning me to stock up. I want to tell you something. Don't ever get mad at a daddy who loves you enough to tell you, son, you're drifting. Amen. Can I tell you something? You daddy's got way more power at your disposal than the preacher does. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, preacher gets up and he's trying to, he's trying to. The old daddy, he's got a single shot. There ain't nothing like your daddy walking up to you and saying, I want to tell you something, son. I'm your daddy and I love you. And you ain't getting by with this. Mm-hmm. You're drifting. Yep. Right. Well, oh, us drifting daddies, you know what we're hoping? That the drifting pastor will tell my drifting son that he's drifting. <laughs> <laughs> and so we all get to drifting. And we feel good because we're all drifting together. There's an old song. You're drifting too far from the shore. You're drifting too far from the shore. Come to Jesus today. Let Him show you the way. For you're drifting too far from the shore. Can I ask you to do something? Have enough sense not to get mad at me. Mad at any preacher that would try to warn you about drifting. I got to thinking about all this and I thought to myself, your drifting will be in secret and your drifting will be in silence. But your rescue will be told around the world. Are you listening to me? David drifted in silence. But when God sent the search and rescue by prophet Nathan, the whole world knows about it. You will, you will drift in silence. Hey, guys, can I tell you something? You may watch that porn on the Internet in secret. But when it's exposed, the whole world will know. The congressman from New York here a couple, three weeks ago thought he was sending his photos in secret. God says that every secret thing will be brought to light. Are you drifting today? To keep drifting, 
You're going to need three things. You're going to need an anchor. Jesus Christ is the anchor. To keep from drifting, you're going to need a power over the current. That's the Holy Ghost. To keep from drifting, you're going to need a compass. That's your Bible. There are generational drifting. I want to show you how far we've drifted. How many people in this auditorium have a picture of your grandmother? Raise your hand. Somewhere there's a picture of your grandmother. All right? Y'all listen? I want to ask you, how many of your grandmas that you've got pictures of is not wearing a dress? Mama, did you ever see your mama without a dress on? One time. Picking berries. Picking berries. Get her some britches to pick berries. There's overhaul. You see how far we've drifted? Our whole generations are drifting. That's right. We're gradually just let things that's coming to our church and things coming to our family. And because we just we're comparing ourselves among ourselves, we're not lying. And we're drifting. You know, honey, I ain't told you this. But God really good on my We're going to put an altar. You know, we, we, always, we always had family devotions a lot of time around the table. You know what God told me? I said, well, God, my kid's almost all grown. And I said, don't matter. I'm going, to, I'm going to get somebody to build me a little old bench. We're going to make a place. We're going to put an altar in our living room. Right smack where anybody in the world walks in the house can see it. And a place where I walk by and see it, and a place I can just walk over there and kneel down and pray and be reminded I want a Bible on that altar. You know why I want a Bible? I want an altar in my house. I don't want my grandchildren to drift. I don't want my children to drift. And I don't want to drift. I'm not going to lie to you this morning. About didn't preach this message because I'm so guilty. Brother Keeler, I don't pack tracks like I used to. I don't witness van like I used to. When Paul told Timothy, he said, endure hardness as a good soldier of the cross. That's one of my favorite verses because it just seemed like you get hard over the years. You get calloused. You do enough battling. You do enough fights. You see enough people that you've worked and loved. And you get you get cussed out and told stories on and on and on and on. It goes pretty soon. You're just like, hey, if you all want to die and go to hell, you help yourself. I'm just going to serve God, preach, and do what God told me to do. And, and, and happy trails. But we lose our burden. And whenever I was studying this, it's like I get dehydrated when you drift out there on the ocean. It's like, Lord, I've been dehydrated. Brother Adams, I want to tell you, I thank you for what you're doing because it's helped me to get my focus back on soul better. I want to ask you this morning, are you drifting? Mama, are you drifting? Young person, are you drifting? Elijah, I don't want you to drift with the crowd. You may drift slowly, silently, lost person, but you'll drift surely to hell. You're here today and you're drifting to hell. I read about a woman just recently, went off the Niagara Falls, piddled around out there on a little boat, and the current got her, took her down and killed her. She wasn't planning on it. Some of you out there in the little river of life and you think, I, I, I can paddle my little boat. And she found out she didn't have enough power to overcome that current. Took her right over the Niagara Falls to her death. Some of you sitting here today and you're lost. You've been drifting around, playing with your soul. You're going to drift. I just, yesterday, a man told me, said, Reggie, please pray for this family. 35 year old mother, two children. Got to hurting in her belly. Went up there, had checked out. She's full of cancer. Give her a few weeks to live. You don't know how long you've got. Can I tell you something? Who knows but what somebody get killed on the way home from church today here in this auditorium? Who knows what your casket's laying down there in the funeral home right now? Who knows but what the dirt is going to be piled beside the grave of your body this week? Who knows but what they'll look up on the uh, funeral home site and see your obituary before the week's over? Are you drifting to hell? I want us to bow our heads today. I want us to stand together. 
you're here today, first of all, and you're a child of God, and the Holy Ghost of God said that preacher's been preaching about you. You've been drifting. And you need my power to get back. I want to ask you to step out of where you're at today and say, Dear God in heaven, I've been drifting, but I'm asking for the power of God to repent. I'm asking for the power of God and the grace of God to stop drifting and get back where I need to be with God. Why don't you step out right now find a place to pray? God, I don't want to drift. I don't want to drift. Would you come? I've been drifting. I don't read my Bible like I used to. I don't pray. My mind's absorbed by things of this world. I'm drifting. I'm drifting. Let me tell you something, folks. Don't let the devil feed you a line of nonsense right now. Obey the Holy Ghost of God quickly, quickly. That dove, I'll promise you what will happen. That dove will speak to you, and if you don't respond to the sweet gentleness of the Holy Ghost, that dove will lift off you in about 30 seconds or 45 seconds. It'll be gone. That moving of the Holy Ghost will be gone, and you'll have missed it. Would you come? Listen, I love you. I'm your pastor, and I'm telling you something. God smote my heart. Reggie, don't be drifting. Would you come? Let me speak to those of you here today who may not be saved. I want you to know something. God loves you, friend. He loves you with an everlasting love. But I want to know today, are you here today and you say, Pastor, I'm drifting toward hell. I am drifting toward hell. I'm not saved. And I need to be saved and I want to be saved. Oh, Pastor, pray for me that I'll come in these next few moments. Pray for me during this time. Pray for me that I'll be saved. Would you, would you give me the privilege of praying for you? I'm not going to embarrass you. Not going to hurt you, nothing of that nature. No, that's no. I just want to pray for you and encourage you, Lord. Would you slip your hand? I'm trying to lead you to the Lord. Would you slip your hand up and say, "Pray for me. I'm not saved." God bless you, sir. I see that hand. Is there another hand anywhere in this building today? I'm not saved. I'm drifting to hell. Pray for me. Is there another hand? Quickly up. God bless you, there, ma'am. I see that hand. Lord bless you. Anyone else before I pray? Other Christians, I'm telling you something. Christians, please listen to me. You're waiting for God to do something with your relatives. God's waiting for you to do something in your heart. Now, I'm going to pray. Any other any person say, I'm lost. I want to be saved today. Now, listen to me very carefully. Here's how a man's saved. He recognizes he's a sinner. Recognizes that Jesus Christ died for his sin on the cross and shed his blood. And you receive the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart in repentance of sin you are, have a godly sorrow that you sinned against a holy God. Recognize that you're in danger of damnation and the judgment and the doom of hell. And, but you receive Jesus as your Savior. You receive him into your heart as your Savior. You believe upon him and call upon him. Here's a prayer in the Bible. I want to give you a prayer. Now listen to me. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I'm going to ask you to pray that prayer, but I'm also going to ask you to come and find a place of prayer. And say, God, save me for Jesus' sake. I place my faith and trust in Jesus' death, burial, resurrection in my place on the cross. I'm asking you to save me. And I want to pray. Anybody else say, pray for me. I'm lost before I pray today. Anybody else? Let me ask this question. I just feel so burdened. Is there a Christian here that you're saved, but you're not where you ought to be? And you're drifting, and you've not come. And you're drifting, and you know you're drifting. Listen, I love you. The man that loves you is the one that will warn you. Those Coast Guard didn't have anything against them boys. It was their job to try to make sure people were safe. If you're here today and you've been saved, but you know you've drifted away from God, you know would you slip your hand up? I want to pray for you too. Would you raise your hand right now? God bless you. There and there and there. God bless you. Others today. Pastor, pray for me. I've been drifting. Don't mean to be. Yes, I see that hand. God bless you, young man. I know we don't mean to drift, folks. In all honesty, we really don't. But it can happen to anybody, any age, any Christian is susceptible to drifting. Anybody else before I pray? The pianist plays very softly. Lord, we thank you today for the sweet Holy Spirit of God. We thank you that you love us enough to tell us the truth about our lives. God, today I want to ask you to forgive me for drifting. I ask you, Heavenly Father, to give your power in my heart my life to get back where I need to be. Lord, a burden for souls, a heart for people, tender before the Lord, focused on the work that you've given us to do. 
God, help us to love people. God, I pray right now for these that raise their hands. Or there were a couple that raised their hands, God, about salvation. I pray that you'd give them grace right now, Lord, just to step out, to find a place to kneel before you and to call upon your name and to receive the free gift of salvation in Jesus Christ. Give them grace right now, Lord, to call upon your holy name. And, Lord, there were several that raised their hands that had been saved, God, but they're drifted. They need prayer. God, I pray for them. Lord, you said pray one for another. Pray one for another. Lord, you said bear one another's burdens. God, today I pray for those folks. I lift them before the throne of grace that they may find help and grace in time of need. Lord, today I pray that you'd help folks who are dehydrated, those that are delirious to know God, that they can call upon the captain of the sea, that Jesus can come walking across the water to their soul. Lord, that he can lift them and bring them back to the shore. Oh, God, I pray that they'll know today that he is a good shepherd. And that he seeks his sheep, brings them back rejoicing upon his shoulders. God, I pray today that there'll be a love in our hearts for you, Lord, that'll keep us from drifting too far from the shore. Lord, again, I pray you help these folks today to get things settled with God. And I'll thank you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to say to the church today that I love you in the Lord. And... Um, I'm not joking you when I tell you this message is rough on me. This message helped me to see some things a little clearer that, that I need to see. And, uh, you know, I think that old boy was happy when they found him. How many figures he is happy when he found him? How many figures he is glad to get back to shore? You'll be happy when you respond right to the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll be happy. And so let God do a good work in you. Amen? Would you think on this message this week? Would you think on it? Think on this message.